Fire Ant Stinger is a mighty blade spiked with harpoon-like points. The venom, colored here in red, is highly concentrated formic acid, like being wasp poison, and just as painful. The fire ant attacks all living things, humans, animals, and insects alike. Each year, millions of people are stung. More often, the stings leave no more than a bad memory, but the pustules may be infected and leave scars lasting for several weeks. Some fire ant victims die from anaphylaxis, or an allergic reaction to the venom, or because they are weak or disabled and unable to flee. Fire ants can also cause major material damage. Attracted to heat, they climb into electric circuits and cause short circuits that destroy transformers, signal lights, airport runway lights, and even start house fires. Each year, the fire ant causes hundreds of millions of dollars of damage. Public opinion now considers the fire ant a plague that must be eliminated at all costs. The fire ant travels as a stowaway via lumps of earth, trees, and even animals that are transported from one place to another. Farmers dread the fire ant not only for its painful sting, which can handicap and slow production, but also for its impact on crops. Scientists have proven the ant's destructive effect on plants, and particularly on buds. Fire ants have struck a surprising alliance with aphids, microscopic pests that feed off plant sap. It turns out that fire ants are incredibly attracted to honeydew. So honeydew is excess sugar water that is excreted by aphid scales and other insects. They, they consume the honeydew, and that gives them lots of sugar. But in turn, they protect these um, aphids and other honeydew-producing insects from ladybird beetles and other predator. And um, we hypothesize that it's because there are truly arboreal ants in South America, and we don't have any of these in the United States. And so all of a sudden, they had free access to, to this honeydew, and, and we think it's a really important um, that it plays a really important role in the invasion success of fire ants. It's a win-win situation. Thanks to the fire ants' protection, the aphids can multiply over and over. The accumulation of honeydew on the leaves blocks photosynthesis and in certain circumstances facilitates the development of mold. The plants die. In the southern United States, crop quantity and quality have considerably diminished. Each year, the federal government spends more than a billion dollars to compensate for the damage. I always found it ironic, I guess, that in the United States, uh, we are an immigrant nation, and we understand the importance of immigration to success in life. And yet, we have this immigrant ant, which has done pretty much the same thing that humans have as far as biological success in North America, and we hate it with a passion. Today, fire ants have taken possession of the entire local ecosystem, gravely threatening its equilibrium. Dr. Sanford Porter is the director of the Agricultural Research Service in Gainesville, Florida. He's convinced that one of Invicta's parasites is the key to curbing the fire ant's expansion. When we go to South America, the fire ants in South America are only about one-fifth to one-tenth of as abundant. So we have uh, five to ten times as many fire ants in the United States. If we can 
bring up the right kinds of natural enemies, then we'll be able to keep the populations of the fire ants it's low uh, forever. If we have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Pseudactyon curvatus, also known as the zombie fly, is a solitary parasitoid present in tropical zones and in temperate regions such as the southern United States. This minuscule fly, hardly bigger than an Invicta ant head, is diabolically Machiavellian. It positions itself near a fire ant colony and chooses its target. Under an electronic microscope, it's possible to see the curved bump which gives this fly its Latin name. The curved hooks are stylets that pierce the ant's chitin. In a flash, the zombie fly injects its eggs into the thorax of its victim. Over here, six, seven, eight. We bring in uh, a, a few grams of ants from the field, and then we let the flies uh, emerge into the box. The lifter lids start raising up and down, and as they raise up and down, the ants run back and forth between each of the cups. As they're running back and forth, trying to move the brood from one cup to the other to keep them in the dark, the flies attack them. Fire ants are alarmed or disturbed. They let off a, a chemical that, uh, that alarms the rest of the nest mates. The problem is when they do that, the flies can smell it. Then they begin diving in and hovering about two or three millimeters above the fire ants. And in just a fraction of a second, they inject an egg into the thorax of the ant, into the body of the ant. Each of the flies has about 200 eggs in it. And so once the, the fly begins attacking, it'll attack ant after ant, uh, several, several ants each minute, injecting eggs into the ants. What follows is blood curdling. The zombie fly's egg hatches and transforms into a maggot that feeds off its host's vital fluids. The maggot then migrates through the ant's thorax towards the head, its final destination. During the two-week period of the maggot's slow migration, the ant continues to live as normal, or so it seems. Once the maggot arrives in its victim's head, the maggot devours the brain to form a cocoon. At this point, the ant has become useless to the maggot, who secretes an enzyme to decapitate its host. One interesting thing about these flies is that when the maggots begin growing in the ant's head, it takes over control of the ant's behavior. It kind of turns the ant into little zombies. So each of the ants are behaving according to what the fly wants and not necessarily what the ants want. So the, the fly makes the ant go into some place of the colony where it's safer, and the ant wanders around looking for leaf litter or some place uh, to die. What's happening uh, in the lab uh, is similar to what's happening in the field, but in the field what ha is happening is that the ant is looking for a place to die because the fly or the maggot would want the ant to do. Once the fire ants have been infected by the zombie flies, Dr. Porter reintroduces them into their original nest. Each contaminated ant is a Trojan horse that introduces the parasite into the heart of the citadel. Once they have grown to maturity, the maggots will spawn a new generation of killers. These flies are self-sustaining biological uh, control agents. That means that once they're established, the population grows and expands without having to release the flies every year and they will be uh, able to help with biological control as long as the fire ants are in the, in the United States. Instead of spreading insecticides, the United States plans to use biocontrolled agents. The zombie flies don't upset the ecological balance. 
When the number of ants decreases, the flies won't have any more to eat and will die. For Operation Zombie to work, 5,000 to 10,000 flies will have to be introduced into the system because the flies are effective only across a small surface area. Fire ants have a predilection for disturbed habitats. Cemeteries, for example, where the soil is frequently turned, are full of nests. Sanford Porter carries out his experiments in the cemetery in its town of Gainesville. One of the things that we find very exciting about these flies is even though the fire ants have been in the United States for 70 to 80 years, the fire ants recognize these flies as, as enemies. And they, they, it's in their genes. They have a suite, a, a whole a variety of defenses against the flies. So we know that the flies have had enough impact on the fire ants to cause the evolution of these behaviors in the, in the fire ants. So we're hoping that these natural enemies will be able to tilt the ecological balance, so that the fire ant densities here in the United States can drop to levels like they are in South America where fire ants largely aren't a problem. The fire ants carrying the zombie fly larvae are reintroduced into the nest. For every fly born, there will be dozens of victims. The generation of zombies introduced into the nest by Dr. Porter has hatched. The flies are ready to attack. The zombies launch an air raid. Each fly briefly lands on the back of an ant and injects its egg into the ant's thorax. The ants emit an alarm pheromone that causes panic in the nest. Wild with fright, the worker ants stop digging and abandon the eggs and larvae. The colony founders into a state of anarchy that will be fatal to its existence. These flies are so specific to fire ants that when they run out of fire ants, the answer is they simply die. These natural enemies will never eradicate fire ants in the United States. That, that, that is not possible, but it is possible fire ant uh, populations can be reduced by, by 80 to 90 percent. And if we only had, uh, had one-tenth the number of fire ants as we have now, we'd be much happier. <laughs>